Hi guys, Mrs. A here. Today we are talking about instantaneous rates of change. Previously we had looked at average rates of change over an interval, but now we're going to look at the instantaneous rate of change at an exact point. So for an average rate of change, if you remember, we look at the slope of the secant line connecting the two points on either side of the interval. For an instantaneous rate of change, we essentially want to narrow in that interval from the average rate of change and make it so small near the point where x is equal to 4 so that we end up with a tangent line at that point instead of a secant line. So the secant line goes through two points. The tangent line is the line that just touches the graph at that point. And then to find the instantaneous rate of change, we find the slope of that line. We can't find the slope of a line unless we have two points. So just having that one point at x equals 4 is not enough. So instead, we make a very tiny interval that includes the 4 so that we can have two points and find the slope of the line that connects the two points. Now, we can choose what we call a preceding interval, which is an interval just before x equals 4, a following interval, which is an interval that is just after x equals 4, or we can use a centered interval, which is an interval that has the x equals 4 right in the middle. The best choice is always going to be the centered interval if you're just doing an estimate for the instantaneous rate of change. So that means we're going to sort of pick a point just before the x equals 4 and just after the x equals 4 and then find the slope of that line using those two points. So to do this question, we are going to choose to use a centered interval of length 0 0.01. We just have to choose a length that is very small. And so for our purposes, this is a good number to choose. Uh, point zero, sorry, point 0.1 would be a little too large because a lot of our questions ask for us to round to the nearest hundredth, so that wouldn't be accurate enough. So we're going to go with point zero 0.01. So to find the centered interval, we take that point zero 0.01, we divide it by 2, which gives us point zero zero 0.005, and now, because we're trying to center it on the number 4, we're going to uh, take the 4, subtract 0 0.005, that gives us 3.995, and then we're going to take the 4 and add the 0 0.005, and that gives us 4.005. And now the interval we're using then for the instantaneous rate of change is going to be from 3.995 to 4. 005. And now you see that this is a very small interval just before the 4 and just after the 4, which gives us that secant line to find an estimate, which is going to be the instantaneous rate of change at 4. So now we go ahead and we use our, our formula for rate of change. We're going to approximate this. And it's it says to do f at x2, which is our right bound for the interval minus f at x1 which is our left bound for the interval like oh sorry and then we have to divide by x2 minus x1 oh, wait let's not forget that denominator like this so now let's continue when we sub in 4.005 into f, that means we sub it into the original equation for the function. So let's continue and do that. We had uh, 6 times 4.005 squared minus 4, so that's f at 4.005, minus f at 3.995 is going to be 6 times 3.995 squared minus 4, and then over 
4.005 minus 3.995 is 0 0.01. This is good. If we've done our interval correctly, the denominator should always match the length of the interval that we chose at the beginning. So these two numbers have to match. Let's continue and calculate this. So here we get approximately 92. Let's do four decimal places for accuracy. And then over 0 0.01. And when you calculate this, we get 0 0.48 over 0 0.01, which comes, oh, pardon me. We got 0 0.48 over 0 0.01. And then when we calculate this, we get 48 as our instantaneous rate of change at x equals 4 for this equation. Thanks for watching. Mrs. A loves math.